If you understood the perpendicularity tolerance, then the remaining tolerances should be uh, straightforward. Uh, we're going to take a look at parallelism, angularity, and then as we did before with perpendicularity, the uh, material condition effect. Well, parallelism, as implied by the uh, symbol, is going to ensure that we're parallel to something else, and that something else, of course, is our datum. So if I have a datum reference of some kind indicated by this straight line, so it could be a line or a plane in this uh, example, I could have <clears throat> a rectangular tolerance zone, in other words, a 2D tolerance zone indicated by two straight lines, or I could have a 3D cylindrical tolerance zone if I'm trying to control an axis. Or I might have two parallel planes, again, a three-dimensional tolerance zone. Of course, the width, T, tells us the separation between the geometries in terms of the line or the width of the cylinder or the separation of the two planes. Uh, as in the previous example, if we're trying to uh, ensure that something is parallel in terms of a surface, uh, we'll need datum A in this case, and datum A will be a plane. And then we're going to uh, create a tolerance zone corresponding to what we see there in the feature control frame. So here we have a static tolerance zone width of 0 0.05 and it's with respect to datum A, so I'll take two parallel planes looking from the top and try to enclose this surface, and that way we can ensure that it's parallel to datum A. Note again that there's no location. I can move, translate the tolerance zone in uh, any direction as long as I remain parallel to datum A. The effect of multiple datums places further constraints upon the relationship. So in this case, we have two datums, datum B and datum A. If I look at the uh, feature corresponding to datum B, which is the primary, note again, here we have an attachment to a dimension line, which indicates that we're going to treat this as a feature of size. And therefore, the first thing I'm going to have to do in establishing this datum reference frame is use the mating envelope principle. and enclose this feature of size in a box, so to speak. So I'm going to shrink, find the smallest box, such that these two surfaces remain parallel to each other. Once I do that, then I define a midplane indicated from the top here by this uh, red line. So I'm looking down, and I've established that midplane. Then we look at datum A. Datum A is also attached to the dimension line. And therefore, I'm going to enclose it in a box as well, such that these two surfaces remain parallel, the smallest box that fits around that feature of size. Once I do that, then I can find the midplane. So you can see what we're trying to do here is find the intersection of two planes, which would be an axis. So I've got a straight line, uh, which would be the intersection of my two mid midplanes. Now what I'm going to do is maintain the feature. What is the feature? We have a cylindrical feature here, and I want to maintain that it's parallel to that line created by the intersection of the two planes. So I will enclose this feature in the smallest cylinder. Once I do that, I can determine its axis. So here is the tolerance zone and it has a width of 0 0.2. And now I can check whether the axis of the feature lies completely within the tolerance zone. Note, again, we're not concerned about the location of this feature, only that it remains parallel. And so I can translate the tolerance zone in any direction in order to enclose the axis that we find for the feature. Here's another example of parallelism of an axis. In this case, we have a mating envelope for the feature, as we've seen before, the smallest cylinder indicated by this green outline here. And that will locate the axis of the feature. 
<clears throat> once I do that, I want to check whether or not it lies within the tolerance zone. And the tolerance zone in this case is defined as 0 0.01 with respect to datum B. So I want to ensure that the axis of this feature is parallel to our datum reference, which is a cylinder and therefore we're going to use a mating envelope to find datum B, which will be an axis indicated by this red line. And <clears throat> now I'm going to maintain my tolerance zone parallel to datum B. Note I can move the tolerance zone and it will have no effect on the outcome as long as I maintain that it's parallel to B. We can also look at the surface as we did with perpendicularity if we drop the diameter symbol as we note here and also the annotation that each radial element needs to be contained within the tolerance zone. Then we're talking about two parallel lines. So it's no longer a cylindrical tolerance zone but we're going to uh, go around the surface of this feature and ensure that the entire surface as individual elements are within this tolerance zone. Same size of the tolerance zone, so the width is still 0 0.01, but each time I check a radial element, it's independent of the previous radial element. And of course, our mating envelope is used to find datum B, as in the previous example, and this is indicated by that red line. Well, we can also introduce material condition for the feature itself. And we've seen this before. When I have a material condition, as indicated by the M in the feature control frame, I'm going to determine the actual size of that feature when I make the part and that will be D. So I use the mating envelope, find the smallest cylinder that fits around that feature, and now I can determine D and subtract 3.6, 3.6 being the maximum material condition for that feature. Everything else remains the same. Datum B, of course, is determined by the mating envelope here, and that's indicated by our red line. That's how we're going to align the cylindrical tolerance zone such that it's parallel with datum B even if I translate it left to right. Well we could also add a material condition on datum B because it's a feature of size. <clears throat> so in that case if I look at datum B it's going to have It's going to have its dimension based on the mating envelope of that datum. The tolerance zone width is going to be based upon uh, that dimension, as well as the actual diameter of the feature of interest. So I add in the differences for a maximum mature condition. Maximum mature condition for B is 8.1. And for our feature, of course, is still 3.6. So we have additional tolerance due to the feature. That's this part. And then we also have additional tolerance due to the deviation from uh, maximum material condition for the datum. Here we have uh, parallelism, again, based upon material condition for both the feature and the datum reference and we're trying to align these two features. So we see two through holes, datum A corresponds to the larger one, and we note that we have maximum material condition on both of them. So we need to determine the size of datum A, and of course, the size of the feature of interest. And then what we're going to do is construct our cylindrical tolerance zone such that it is maintained parallel to datum A. Then we'll add in our additional tolerance and that will be based upon the material condition 
which in this case would be the smallest hole, and in this case would also be the smallest hole. So we have 12 and 8, and as you can see here, we subtract 12 from the actual diameter that we find, and in this case, we subtract 8 from the actual diameter that we find for this hole. <clears throat> Again, as you can see here, the hole could be in this position and still be parallel to datum A. Now note before that when we talked about establishing uh, our datum reference frame, when we have a material condition on our datum, we create an MMC envelope. And that is equivalent to what we're doing here for our datum A, where we're finding the difference from uh, A to the material condition versus if I created an MMC envelope at 12. So again, we know exactly what the width of the tolerance zone here is versus if I create an MMC envelope here, and then I know the deviation of the actual feature from its material condition, its equivalent. Well, of course, we can have multiple material conditions. So here we see three. We've got for the feature of interest, And for datum B and datum A, we note, of course, again, datum A, datum B are both features of size because they're attached to the dimension line. So we're going to find B first, right? and B is going to correspond to this plane. So we find the mating envelope. And then for datum A, its corresponding mating envelope, then we're going to subtract out the maximum material condition, which in this case would be the largest dimension because it is an external feature. And then for the feature itself, we have its maximum material condition, which is the largest diameter of the cylinder. So you can see we have three components that all contribute to the width of this tolerance zone. Now, angularity is just the general case. And here, uh, there's typically some confusion uh, when we deal with an angle because uh, we're used to dealing with radians and degrees. But be careful here because when you see the number in the feature control frame, it is in the dimensional units that are being used in the specification. And therefore, the width of the tolerance zone is not an angle, and that tends to uh, bring some confusion. Here we have the angularity of a surface. You can see we need a basic dimension that tells us what the angle should be nominally. So when we look in this case at the surface, it's 45 degrees with respect to datum A. You should recognize that datum A is a plane representing that's this surface here. And so we're going to establish our datum reference for datum A. Here I've exaggerated the part that we've manufactured but we'll orient the tolerance zone. In this case, we have two planes representing the tolerance zone. We can translate those two planes as long as we maintain this angle of 45 degrees for the tolerance zone. So we're trying to encapsulate the surface between these two planes over that entire surface. So if it lies within that tolerance zone, we're saying it is at the correct angle. How about the angularity of an axis? Well, if we're controlling an axis, which we can see here because of the diameter symbol in the specification, uh, then we're going to create a cylindrical tolerance zone and check, as you can see here in this green region, over the length of the feature. I have an angle, basic dimension of 30 degrees that we want to ensure, and therefore I have to maintain the tolerance zone at that angle. Of course, I could translate the tolerance zone as long as the angle is maintained. <clears throat> Datum A, as we can see here, is a flat surface, and so I'm going to maintain the angle with respect to that surface. Notice that that does not restrict the rotation, so I could rotate this hole, and in this case, uh, because it's symmetric, it uh, wouldn't matter, so that we still have an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the plane. 
Well, we can also look at the surface of this hole and control the radial elements, in other words, uh, the longitudinal elements. We do that as we saw before, using the notation each radial element on the surface of the hole treated independently. And of course, we note there's no diameter symbol here, so we know we're dealing with the surface and not the axis. The shape of the tolerance zone, we've got two lines maintained at 30 degrees with a separation of 0 0.01 representing the width of the tolerance zone. And now as you can see here, we are just going to go around the surface and determine whether the surface is within the tolerance zone. We can also introduce a mature condition with angularity. Here we can see we have a uh, feature control frame and I'm interested in the uh, midplane here. We know it's a midplane because we're attached here to the uh, dimension line. And so this midplane has to be maintained with respect to datum A. And datum A would be this surface. And now I have a basic dimension of 68 degrees. So in order to find the midplane, I'm going to use the mating envelope. So I will enclose that such that these two surfaces remain parallel. And then once I do that, I can determine the midplane indicated by this dashed line here. My tolerance zone is two parallel planes that should contain the midplane. And of course, separation is based on 0 0.05. That's the width plus we have to determine D, so at this time you should recognize it's based on maximum material condition, which is the largest dimension, 5.02. So the width of my tolerance zone, 0 0.05, plus the absolute value of the actual, when we make the part, minus 5.02. Of course, we can translate our tolerance zone and still maintain 68 degrees. The entire midplane has to lie within that tolerance zone in order for that part to be acceptable. So at this point, you should understand the concepts of orientation, including perpendicularity, parallelism, angularity, and also how mating envelopes are used in determining uh, the orientation of the feature and uh, when we're using material condition to determine the deviation from material condition. So orientation tolerance zones, Again, don't forget, you need a datum reference frame. If there isn't one, then you need some clarification as to uh, what the designer's intent is. Also note, we are not constraining the position of a feature that we're trying to control. We also have seen how mating envelopes are going to be used for features of size. And orientation tolerance will definitely affect the shape because if we're controlling orientation, then we're also constraining the shape indirectly.